<laughs> hey, here we go. Today's Revit tip is going to be on how to make a line-based family. So, wh what is that? What is a line-based family? I don't even know. Okay. Typically, when we make a family, it's a... Um, a family that we just load in and we place like a like a piece of furniture maybe or a cabinet, wall cabinet, base cabinet, or we a lighting fixture. Those are fairly static objects that we load in. And then we can adjust them by changing some of the parameters to make them wider or taller or different colors maybe. But a line-based family is a family in Revit where it is there's an extrusion that follows your cursor. You just make two clicks in Revit on your wall maybe, and it builds the family the length of the line that you draw. So here we go. All right. I'm gonna put my face over here and right up on top of this little mountain. Hey, hey look at me, I'm up on a mountain. Ah. It looks like I'm a giant looking over the mountain. Hmm. What's going on over there? Okay, here comes Revit. Bam. Revit. All right, so if you want a line-based family, let's just go to our plan first, <laughs> floor plan, and maybe we'll go to an elevation of the building, front elevation of this little building that I've got, and here it goes. Let's suppose maybe you wanted to put in a, I don't know, a sill a sill underneath these windows, but you didn't want to build it inside the window family. You just wanted to be able to place it or stretch it, okay, to um, be wider than a window or over two windows that have brick in between. Hmm, what's up with that? Okay, so here we go. Let me show you how to do it. First, I'm going to click on File. I'm going to hover over the word New and pick Family. So we're going to New Family. And when you scroll down, there are generic families down here, and one of them is line-based. Look at that, generic model line-based. So I'm going to say OK and open up the template. So here's the template. And what we're doing right now is we're looking top-down on this object, kind of like on the wall or on the floor. So this is it. So they've given us a length that is four feet long, and they've placed a reference line in here that is doing the work for us. So this is the template, it's ready to go. But we need to build an extrusion in here from say the left side or side view that will extrude along this line. Okay, so here we go. Let's go to the left side elevation. So this is it looking on the left and this is where we were standing up here looking down. So let's take a look at this. Okay, <clears throat> you kind of have to imagine this bottom down here is the wall you're working on. So what I'm going to do is build an extrusion, just a simple extrusion on this particular example. Let's say that we're building a window sill of some sort, okay? I'm going to come out, maybe a little bit of a slope out, okay? And down, and I'm building a, um, let's just say I'm going to come down a foot, <laughs> one foot, okay? That's a one foot sill. And if I were to draw this like this, done, this would be our sill underneath our window up here. But look, it's flush against the building. Hmm, that might not be the case every time. So more often than not, we are embedded inside the wall. So I am going to put it three and five eighths inch into the wall. And that, my friends, is the thickness of a brick and get rid of this other line. This needs to be a closed loop. I'm going to put a little extra detail on it so you can tell where top is. And here's a here's a little bit of a shape. I'm going to um, just cut out a little bit. And I'm going to split that and trim. Just putting a little extra detail so we can tell which side is up when we get it. Let's just say this is our extrusion. Beautiful. Oh my goodness. I want to see you can put um, dimensions on it if you want, just for clarity. These will not come into your family. And if that's too far, one inch, I'm going to change that dimension down to only be one inch out from the wall. 
Okay, so you can adjust it. These dimensions will not port over into your um, into your family. They're built inside it, but you won't see them. So here's what we're dealing with. I'm going to save this onto my desktop, happy place uh, desktop. Just a convenient place to put it right now. Okay, this is going to be a precast sill. Let's just call it that and say save. Okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, you can't save it when you're in edit mode. Oh, I hate it when that happens. File's not saved. You have to finish. Hey, that hasn't happened to me in a long time. Okay, you hit the checkbox here to finish this object. And when we go to back to the reference level, the top view, you'll notice that this is it. It's extruding along, but it's not going far enough. See, it's not quite going far enough. You can use a line and say, go down to this end, you, and lock it. That way, your extrusion is locked to this, okay? The length is going to be four feet. That's a, that's a default length, but you'll, be, you'll see how it works in a minute. So it slopes down. It's got a notch in it. Precast. Now we can save. Save. Better not give me any trouble now. Precast. Um, sill. Fill. Fill, there it is, precast sill, save. Okay, now that it's saved, I'm gonna load it into my project and close it. <laughs> and now, if I'm looking on, I'm gonna hit cancel for a sec. Okay, I'm looking at my elevation and I wanna use my precast sill. Well, I'm gonna go over here to my families and I'm going to scroll down to generic models. I'm going to expand that. And sure enough, there's the precast sill. Look at that. So if I expand that, you'll see that there is the type. <clears throat> I'm going to drag that over into my project. And now the same dialog comes up that comes up that came up before. Okay. So I just wanted to show you where you can get this when you need another one. So it wants you to pick a plane that you're working on. Makes sense. So I say, okay, I pick a plane. I'm just going to pick the wall, pick, and now it's waiting for me to draw a line. And I can come in here under my window and click and drag my cursor to the other end of the window and click. And I've got a sill. Friends, we have a sill. Ding, 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 ding. We've got a sill. But here's the reason that we made this. So this doesn't have to be part of this family in, because what if you wanted a sill? I'm going to zoom in. I am going to create another one from this window, and it can span all the way to this window. See, you can use these on any location that you want on your building. And I'm going to do one more, and I'm going to pull it. I'm going to just put one on a single. So, whoops, wait for it to find the corner before you start dragging away. Okay, there, would you look at that? We've just dragged these across. I'm going to go to 3D and take a look at it. Ladies and gentlemen, there's our fantastic sills. One under those double windows, one expanding across some other windows, and one single over here. But wait, these things don't, they're not concrete. So we need to give the ability to this family to be able to change its materials, okay? So I'm just going to pick one of them. I'm going to pick Edit Family, okay? And here, I'm going to pick this object. You just pick this, this extrusion, and over here you'll see under the properties, material, and it says by category. That's like generic whatever material. But if I click this little button on the far right, click that, and now I'm going to give it a new parameter. The new parameter is going to be called um, sill material, okay? And it's a type parameter so that all of them will change at the same time. That's all I have to do to give the ability to this family to work back in the project so I can, the user can change the materials. So I'm going to hit save, okay? And yes, it already exists. I know. I know what I'm doing. Save. Say yes. I'd like to overwrite it. Okay. Load into the project. Now, overwrite the existing one. Yes. Okay. Now, if I pick one of these, any one of them, you'll notice in the type parameters, 
because I made it a type parameter. I click on edit type and you'll see right there, look, sill material. By cat, it's still set it by category, but now I can change it. So I click on the word by category, and over here, three little dots pop up on a little tiny button. And you can pick that button, and your whole material palette will come up. And we don't want to make it out of glass or wood or anything, so I'm just going to do a search for precast. And precast concrete comes up. I'm going to say OK. And now, when I say OK again, all of these are going to turn into precast concrete. Would you look at that? Isn't that the prettiest thing you ever saw? <laughs> you got to love it when a plan comes together. Okay, so you can use this, friends, for headers over windows, sills. You can use it for chair railing. You can use it for crown molding or base molding. This line base family is a very, very useful family in Revit. All right. Well, I hope that Revit tip helped you. And if you have any questions about how to do this, wait for it. Hey, if you have any questions about how to do this, just ask the questions down in the comments below and I'll address them. I really do hope this helps with your Revit uh, working in the future. Oh, wait, I didn't cut a section through it to show you that it is embedded inside. Woo! Here we go. We're going to go do that really fast. Okay. So let me go back to the plan, <laughs> and I just happen to have a section that goes through that window, and when we zoom in on, do I have a, do I, I actually don't have one going through that window, wait a minute, on the second floor, <laughs> back Mike, go to the second floor Mike and see what you're doing, second floor plan, okay, this section right here goes right through that window, and so what we're going to do is open it up. And on the second floor, here is our precast sill. And I'm going to tell it to play nice. I'm going to say join. Precast sill, join with wall. And there it is. Would you look at that? You join it with the wall to get it to operate correctly and give you the proper line weights around the outside. And that's what we're talking about, friends. Now, now that right there, that is a fantastic. Fantastic. Oh my goodness, this is amazing. Um, that's an amazing sill. Okay, there we go. I just had to show you that one last thing on how to make it actually work in your sections. You guys have a great day and I'll talk to you later. All right, bye-bye.